Greetings. We are the Guardian. Welcome to Night Vision. I recently bought a little cabin way up in the mountains, out in the middle of nowhere. I love it up there. It's so peaceful and quiet. For some reason, being alone in nature, revives my spirit. The cabin itself was in pretty good shape. The driveway, was a whole different ballgame. The people that owned it previously, never lived there. They would just come out and stay the weekend a couple times a year. So yesterday, I started working on the driveway, to smooth out all the bumps and valleys. But since it was up in the mountains, that took a pickaxe, not a rake. When I got done, I was starving, so I went home and had a great big supper. While I was eating, I flipped on the television to catch the news. But just as it came on, there was a commercial from some charity, asking for financial support for starving children in Africa. Talk about a guilt trip. So I called in, and pledged to monthly support one of those poor kids. But just as I hung up, God spoke to my heart, and said that's how he sees his kids, his creation. He said, imagine if you flew over to Africa, and you brought a bunch of food with you. Meat and potatoes. Carrots and celery. Even pie and ice cream. You set it all out on a big table in the middle of the village. You then called out to all the starving children, come and get it. They all came running. But to your astonishment, they would not eat the food. They all just turned their nose up to you, and walked away complaining. No, they hadn't eaten elsewhere, they just simply didn't want what you had to offer. But it gets worse. Some of them came back, and beat you, and then nailed you to a tree, and stood there hurling insults, until you died. That's how God feels. He has prepared his children a banquet, but they refuse to eat. They are starving and emaciated, but decline his offer, to dine with the Creator. He loves his creation so much, that he took on the form of a man, and came down to fellowship with his children. The Creator, took on the form of the creation, so that they could relate to him without fear. He came to bring them nourishment, and living water. The water of eternal life. But did they eat? Did they drink of the water of life? Some did, but most refused his offer, and walked away. But it got worse. Some of them came back, and beat Jesus, and then nailed him to a cross, and stood there hurling insults, until he died. But the crucifixion was not a surprise to God. He knew how the people were going to react. It was all a part of the plan. Jesus came to not only teach us all truth, he came to solve the enigma, of sin. God wants you to love him. But for love to be genuine, it has to be your choice. So in order for you to be able to choose or reject God's love, he had to give you free will, the right to make your own decisions. But that unfortunately opens the door to sin and rebellion, which then drives a wedge of separation between you, and God. God is holy. He is the personification of perfection, in his nature and his deeds. And because he is holy, he literally cannot be in the presence of sin. Or more precisely, sin, cannot be in the presence of God. So that creates a problem. How does he enjoy fellowshipping with his children, who are so prone to disobedience? He devised a system of redemption. Literally from the beginning of time, he devised a system of restoration, involving blood. In the Old Testament, the Jews would annually sacrifice a lamb at the temple, and that lamb was their scapegoat. In other words, the shedding of the blood of the lamb, would put them back into a covenant relationship with the Creator. It did not absolve them, it simply pushed their sentence forward, to the next year. But finally, at a time of his own choosing, God came down in the form of a man, to do away with the sacrificial system, by becoming the ultimate sacrifice. When John the Baptist saw Jesus approaching him from a distance, he declared, Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Just before he died on the cross, Jesus cried out, It is finished. At that very moment, several things happened. The most significant, was in the temple. The temple was divided into two main parts, the holy place, and the most holy place. The holy place represented earth. The most holy place, represented heaven. They were separated by a huge veil. When Jesus said, it is finished, the veil miraculously ripped in two, from top to bottom. That monumental event, was God declaring that Jesus, had just made a passageway, between heaven and earth. So you have a decision to make my friend. You are spiritually starving to death. God offers you life. Come to the table, and dine with your creator, your father God. Or not. That's your choice.
accept or reject, embrace or deny, eat or starve. Just know that whatever you choose, your decision is eternal. Your decision carries over into the next life. Reject him here, and he must reject you there. If you choose to love God with your whole heart, mind, and strength, he will form a covenant relationship with you. A promise of love and provision. He will bring new meaning to your existence, a hope and a future. He will never leave you, or forsake you. Allow him to smooth out all the bumps and valleys, and give you an abundant life. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you my God, are with me. Peace be unto you and your house. Your body runs on food, but your spirit, runs on God. Hungry anyone? 